folks. So you might hear a little bit of noise in the background. So last week I didn't do a regular weekly vlog because I was spending all my time in the house going through watching my videos from 2023, catching up on notes that I got behind on, and um, you know just getting a little bit better handle on how much I sold last year so I could do my taxes, which are due today. But anyway, we have a week of sun, dudes, after kind of a mostly dreary week last week. But um, last week is important for me to remember um, that I did get all of my herbs and stuff. They germinated in the house and I moved them out to the greenhouse tables. And so that's my green onions, the parsley, the cilantro, the dill. That, so that's all out there. Um, the, you know, cilantro parsley didn't, is just kind of barely germinating. So hopefully I didn't move them out too early, but that's where they're at. Um, I need to get one more greenhouse table out there because um, I'm running out of space. You might notice that I have more soil. Um, so I got a couple loads of soil here that's all gonna go over to this area where it was some soil and sand, but it was quite sandy. And um, then the other thing is uh, I had problems with one of my transplants not coming up well and germinating well. My chard, I got the seed from high mowing and it was a different type of chard that I thought might be better, but I looked at the seed when I was initially seeding it. It looked kind of weird, um, just didn't look very good. So I kind of double seeded some of the soil blocks, but still I didn't, the germination rate was really bad. So because I didn't have any more soil blocks made, I had just had that tray that was already seeded with the chard and another tray that I was reserving for bok choy. And um, so I decided to go ahead and dig out the, the, you know, the few germinating chard plants from that tray. And then I replanted, um, last night I replanted the chard with it, the varieties that I had left over from, you know, years past. So we'll see how they do. I did multiple seeds per cell. So it's gonna be lots of seeds probably coming up. And um, yes, and I also seeded that one final tray of bok choy. I usually start the bok choy later than all, all the other garden transplants because it grows so fast in this early weather. It just grows, it doesn't care. And so um, I got that seeded too. So yay, um, it's been, you know, above freezing, you know, but sometimes getting as low as 35 Fahrenheit at night. But last night they were like, oh man, it's gonna freeze. And so I put the row cover on the beds and the transplants out in the greenhouses just to be safe. I mean, the temperatures in there are normally like five degrees higher, even at night, you know? Um, and so I just thought, you know, let's just be safe. So I covered everything up and I just came out here earlier and um, uncovered the beds. Um, and then I'm gonna cover them up one more night because they keep saying it's gonna freeze, but um, so I'm just gonna be safe. And then I probably can just pull that row cover out for the rest of the season. Yes, um, so I've got a lot of tasks that I got to do um, this week. And so let's get to it. I just wanted to keep these four beds relatively dry because it's been raining the last couple of weeks so that when we did have a nice week, I could pull them off. It'd be relatively dry to add some fertilizer and then rototill and then plant. Um, I would like to have, you know, gotten the fertilizer in them and rototilled earlier and then tarp them so the weeds could try and come up, you know, whatever weeds might come up in this cool weather and then die off and kind of have more of a stale seed bed. But um, I didn't have the fertilizer. So I do now. These uh, three beds, which are gonna be in carrots this year, they had seaweed mulch on them all winter long. And in the spring, I scraped the seaweed off the bed into the pathways. Sometimes I just leave that all season long for it to compost down and then I scoop it on later onto the crop. But because it's gonna be in carrots, it's not gonna be very easy to put compost on top of carrot tops. So I'm thinking I better scoop this off and incorporate it into the bed along with the fertilizer. This bed here is gonna be in baby chard and it didn't have anything on it all winter long all tarped 
I've got them doubled up, hoping to keep as much light out as possible. If I really want to be serious about weed suppressing, I need to uh, get some serious tarps. All the seaweed is scooped from the pathway under the bed. If the birds were smart, they would get in there and mix this stuff up for me because there's a lot of worms in there. Nighty night. Nighty night. Wake up, wake up, it's time to grow. So the birds are over there in the raspberry patch, along with the squirrel, who's really mad. I ended up turning those three beds of seaweed out there with a rake uh, to break up the kind of clumps of seaweed and to get the rest of it to dry out. So the birds are not helping me out. They're everywhere else, it seems like, except for out in my main garden where I need them. Uh, yes, uh, I was missing a leg to my last greenhouse table. So Tyler cut a piece of copper for me. And so I need to put that table together. But while we have kind of this nice weather and it's daytime, I am going to throw the soil that's under those blue tarps. I made some transplant soil years and years back that ended up killing all my transplants in the spring. And that's how I ended up starting to use potting soil for my soil blocks. I mean, for many years I made my own transplant soil and I had no problem. So I don't know what the deal is, but it's probably fine mixed in with a bunch of stuff. So I'm just gonna move it over to the Hugo culture over there and, you know, just mix it in with some other stuff because I want to plant some rhubarb, chives, maybe th transplant some fireweed or something like that over there. Check this out. This all came out of this tarp here. All of squirrel's pine cone food. Okay, so I just took a box, put a hole in both sides. I put some flat rocks in there so the box won't move around. Copper legs to keep the slugs off the transplants. Oakley, now I have two tables in both of the greenhouses. Nighty night. Nighty night. I watered all the soil blocks in both the greenhouses. Tomorrow I'm going to run the drip on all of the beds. So what I'm going to do first is go ahead and go through with the hoe and just knock what ever weeds, tiny weeds might be growing so they die in the sun today. Um, but before I do that, I'm gonna grab the mint pots that are back in the back there, uh, stored all winter long. Everybody in both greenhouses weeded. And yay, everybody's surviving. I pulled the mint pots out from over there. The mint didn't do very good last year. So I gotta figure something else out, I mean, it's pretty hard to mess up mint, right? I went through the three carrot beds, the seaweed with the leaf rake real quick, get those dried out even more. And then I went through and hoed these sugar snap peas, which are coming up and not all of them yet. I am getting ready for Tyler to rototill tonight and getting my fertilizer together. This is the rock phosphate for the three carrot beds. And they're 40 feet by two and a half feet, which is hundred square feet. So we're gonna do two and a half pounds per bed, which should be enough, but it may take a while for that stuff to dissolve, I think. So I thought I'd throw in some triple super phosphate, which might be more soluble and do 1.3 pounds per bed. Uh, hopefully that's not too much. And then, I've got a bag of vegan mix, just a standard fertilizer for the baby chard bed. Um, I've had a bunch of old stuff stashed up here and uh, so I just pulled one of these 25 pound bags down uh, for that one 40 foot bed. And then I've got this potty mix here. This is the big chunky stuff that I don't wanna use for soil blocks if I can get some more. So I'm just gonna throw this stuff on the Hugo culture, you know and just add to that material. I bought this bag of potting soil today. Um, it's the same company that makes this one, but um, this is all they have. So I looked on the website, it doesn't say what's in here. 
and it doesn't say in the package. You know, no big, huge, monstrous clumps or anything. So this looks fine. Let's see. 10 more bags for soil blocks for what's left of this year and for next year. Probably more than I need. I thought about uh, moving those boxes that had that, uh, you know, the transplant soil mix and just like covering the driftwood bits over here. Okay, can you see it? Cardboard, weighted down by driftwood. Old chunky potting soil. Old chunky potting soil on Hugo culture. Nighty night, nighty night, nighty night, nighty night. Bok choy is up, charred not yet. So I'm gonna take the bok choy out to the greenhouse table and just for the day, I think I'll take the leeks out there too. Hello. Row cover off for good in both greenhouses. And the drip is dripping. Do you see the drip? Dripping, drip, drip, drip. And uh, I'm gonna transplant these last few lettuces that weren't quite big enough. Okay, so we have 64 total little lettuce fellows. The raspberry leaves have decided to pop. Poor little rototiller. No guard. Held together by strings. Four beds rototilled. I don't know if I said, but the reason I'm putting fertilizer into these beds is because this is relatively new soil. It's only had like a couple years worth of you know, seaweed and stuff like that. So I had a chance this morning to scrape the seaweed off into the pathway and then crunch it up with my feet and then rake it back onto the bed. And the rototiller crunched into the pretty small pieces. I was concerned that if the pieces were too long, they might drag through with the Jang cedar and then pull up, you know, stuff that was seated beside it. But that looks no worse than any stick or rock that I might run into. My four garlic beds, looks like most of my garlic made it through the winter. And so what I'm gonna do here is find the pathways in all these beds. Well, that took longer than I thought. There's a lot more material in the pathways. Um, I shoveled it out, threw it on top of the bed and then kind of crumbled it up by hand. But it was very nice and crumbly. So um, I'm not too unhappy with this soil. Chard is up charred out with his little herb friends and leaks out for the day again. I've got seven 50 foot lengths of Agrabon. That'll be enough for the six beds of transplants and the four seeded beds out there. Once the row cover comes off the garlic, when it outgrows that, I've still got quite a bit of Agrabon left. And I will need to clip some more of this wire hoop, which I've got a little bit here. I'm not sure if that's enough. Yaya pelleted carrot seeds from high mowing. Okay, seven rows seeded in this bed. I've got some Jang cedar appreciation going on. And covered up to keep out the birds. My dear friend is wandering over toward the garden. This is where Dear Buddy's been just laying down, camping out. Already seen a little fly friends here and there. Little fluttery buddies out here. Oh, there's a number of them. Or two of them anyway. Okay, before I jang seed the other two carrot beds, I'm gonna work on this bed of baby greens. And I have, uh, marked out five rows with the empty Jang cedar. And I've got 10 foot increments marked out with little branches. I'm starting in this bed at the north end. I'm gonna try and get a quarter bed. Hand seeding baby chart because I don't know how to Jang seed it. Mizuna. Next up is the red tabby spinach. Oh, I went too far. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pelleted carrot seed from high mowing. Uh, 
from, but this is some chunky monkey soil, so we'll see how it does. Giants of Komar are pelleted carrot seed territorial. And it's gonna be Giants of Komar in this bed right here. I'm running out of battery, so I'm just gonna zip through it. Okay, folks, so here's the deal. Normally when I plant carrots, I do it before like a week of rain so that they get plenty of moisture and they germinate really well. The problem is the weather forecast has changed and it looks like we're not gonna get very much rain. It's not gonna be enough rain to germinate the pellets, I don't think, you know, like to dissolve the pellets for the carrot seed. And so what I have done is I'm going to set up the sprinkler that I used years ago. I have a video about how I did that. And I'm gonna just get this as wet as possible. Hopefully it doesn't wash seeds out. Hopefully it's gentle enough. And um, then I'm gonna cover it up. It's probably gonna be a mucky mess. So I pulled the old Agarbon roll cover off the garlic. I'm gonna use that for these four beds. And then I'm gonna put the newer stuff on the garlic bed. No, he just doesn't even care, man. Okay. I might have to stay here and patrol. I'm out here patrolling to make sure the robin doesn't get in those seeded beds. Last but not least, we got sugar snap peas. I had 80, now I have 100. I ran a rake through here, and I'm just gonna throw the clover alongside here, and um, then just kinda, you know, cover it up a little bit. And I think there's enough moisture in the soil plus whatever dew or a little tiny bit of rain. And that should be fine for the raw seed that I'm using. So I'm just gonna broadcast this, right? Really heavily since it's such old seed. And I always get it in with the crop, so this way I won't. Cover it up to keep out the birds. Super soggy. That's what we want. The roll cover will keep the moisture in and we're gonna have overcast days, supposedly. Okay, everything protected. The direct seeded stuff, I just wanted to protect from the birds scratching around in there. The garlic probably doesn't need any more protection. They're big enough that the birds can't do any damage, but um, I thought I'd add a little bit of warmth at night. Um, it has been frosting every night, so. Um, I've noticed that my new Agarbon seems to be a heavier weight than the old Agarbon. I, I had this old stuff in a roll, I think long before we um, got this property, so I didn't know what weight I had bought. So I don't know, I'd almost rather have the lighter weight, let more light in, because I'm not going to be planting anything that, you know, is going to be in danger of freezing. I just won't plant that soon. Um, so I don't know, we'll see see how I like it. Oh, I don't need my sun hat anymore. Um, I'm going to do a video later on when everything's germinated to, you know, I'll go over more detail about how I planted and also, you know, just how things are germinating and growing. Um, yeah, so that'll come later. Anyway, I think that's it folks. I'll see you next week. So this is cool. If I wanted to eat baby bok choy leaf size, these guys are ready. But I'm gonna let them. I'm gonna let them grow up.